Today, we are honored to present the rebroadcast of a special live message from our beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai, which was given on Christmas Eve, December 24, 2020. In her earnest address to viewers across the globe, Master expounded on the original meaning of Christmas, reminding us to consider the nature of giving and what it would mean if we gave in the same way as our Lord Jesus Christ. Master also spoke of the loving vegan solution that benefits all lives and the spiritual treasure we should seek to nourish our souls. We now present the re-air of the live broadcast, The True Spirit of Christmas, a heartfelt message from Supreme Master Ching Hai, vegan, part one of two, on Words of Wisdom. Hi, I hope you see me, people outside there. <laughs> How are you? Mm. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. I hope you can see me. Yes, all of you outside. My love to you in the name of Jesus and in the name of God Almighty. This is Christmas again, one more year, so fast. And what a year we had. Anyway, it's Christmas time. And we should remember what Christmas is all about. It's about our Lord Jesus who sacrificed everything for his disciples and for the world. There is a lot of Jesus teaching left behind. But we could also remember only some uh, concentrated phrases that are very important for us that we could use in our daily life. He said that whatever I do, you can do better. Why did the Lord say that? Yes, he healed the sick, mm -hmm. cured the blind, fed the multitude, and most important is the compassion, the love that he conveyed to all his disciples as well as the people who believe in him at that time. That's what makes uh, Lord Jesus remembered even all these thousands of years. And we celebrate every year in his name. What did he say that we can do better? <laughs> How can we do better? We thought Lord Jesus is the highest representative of God, of heaven. How can we do better? Of course we can. We don't have to be the doctor to heal the sick. We don't have to have magic to cure the blind. What Jesus did is not just physical. He cured his disciples' blindness, ignorance. These are the blindness that uh, many of us have because we do not know God inside. Jesus didn't just fit the multitude. He did not just cure the blind physically, but he also elevated the spirit of uh, his disciples and the people at that time so that they could see God inside. Because he has told us that the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is within you. Okay, that is another thing. That needs some guidance and uh, continuous contemplation in order to realize God. At the time of Jesus uh, baptizing, people already could see the kingdom of God, a glimpse of it. Nowadays, we still can. If we have a good guide, good teacher, good master who knows how, to help us to open the kingdom of God for us to see. But that is uh, something spiritual, and uh, it's not easy to explain here in uh, physical language. So we're just talking about 
the spirit of Christmas in a, in a physical sense. Okay, we can heal the sick, we can cure the blind. Yes, we can feed the multitude. Yes. Uh, we don't have to be a doctor to do that. We can help people by financial assistance, so that the person who needs can go to the doctor and let him herself be cured of his blindness. Nowadays, we can, or his sickness. Like, say, for example, the pandemic. We have tried our best. All the scientists, the doctors have tried their best to find the cure, and also the vaccination to prevent further sickness and death. We thank heaven for that. And let's hope these cures and this vaccination help our world, saving many, many lives, as many as possible. Thank you, God. Now, how do we fit the multitude? We feed the multitude by using our own financial resources to help those in need. Jesus could feed 500, 5,000, but we can feed even more than that with modern technology as well as uh, opportunity. Nowadays, we have so many, many convenient ways to to live our lives, to earn money, and to help other people. All the money that we even use for, like, uh, in war, for example, we could use it and feed the whole world. I don't have that much money. I do what I can only. But if everyone does what he can, even as humbly as I do, the world will be a heaven on earth. No one would ever have to experience sickness or, you know, uh, be lacking of anything, being hungry, cold, that no one take care of. All the money we use to cure sickness, like pandemics, cost billions and billions. And all the money we have to use to mitigate the climate change, we could save them and also help the poor, help the hungry. Right now, millions of people already experience hunger everywhere in the world. Every five seconds, a child dies of hunger. And not to talk about children, adults, elderly also die because of hunger. And we use our money for so many things which are not necessary. We could use that to help, to feed the poor, feed the hungry. And the hungry multitude doesn't even have to, to exist on our planet. We have plenty to feed everyone. We have enough money to feed the whole world. If we don't waste it on war, on animal rising, that causes climate change, that causes a lot of sickness and pandemics on our planet. And thus, we spend even more money on those just to amend the suffering, not to even prevent the sickness. This is a sad thing. We did not even have to prevent the sickness if we did not raise the animals. We do not have to have hunger even if we don't use a large percentage of food to feed the animals in order to gain a few kilograms of meat. And not only that, we cause a lot of sickness because of meat and fish and eggs and dairy products. That is not for human consumption. You see, it's just like a, a cycle, yeah, endless cycle. We earn so much money or we earn with so much work and hardship and we just waste it. We don't even need animal products to survive. In our group, we eat only vegan food, no eggs, no milk, no meat, no fish, nothing from the animals. 
and you don't even have to wear fur to keep warm. This is not real fur. This is vegan fur. We make it in our company, and many companies nowadays they also make uh, vegan fur. No suffering to animals, no animal fur, nothing. And we live this way with a high conscience. We don't have to always spend a lot of money or kill a lot of animals to survive. The, the spirit of Christmas is like that. Today, many people celebrate Christmas inside their house or with their friends or with groups or by Zooming, yeah. Many people don't. Many people cannot afford. I, I do not celebrate Christmas. I send things to let my uh, team workers celebrate, but I myself don't celebrate anything. I'm just here today to remind you of the spirit of Christmas. It's not just all about ourselves, that we have a big party, chopping down millions of young trees, killing millions of, of animals, turkeys, the innocent ones, they wanted to live, they wanted to enjoy life, they wanted also to celebrate Christmas in their heart. But we just cut short their life, snub the life out of them without thinking twice. I don't want to cry now. I think about that. Think about that. We don't have to kill the turkey to celebrate Christ's birthday. He never ate any animal product. He was vegetarian. He was from the Essene lineage, and they have been vegetarian all the time. So if we celebrate Christ's birthday, Christmas, we should remember all this. His teaching is important. If we say we are follower of Jesus, then we should remember the Lord's core teaching, that is compassion, love for all beings. When the Lord carry the lamb, you know, the lame lamb that could not walk, He carry him. That's just another symbol of His compassion and love to those who are meek and defenseless and innocent. That's the way we should do nowadays. For 2,000 plus years, we celebrate the Lord's birthday every Christmas, every year. But what do we do? What do we do with His teaching? We did not do much. We did not remember what the Lord was really teaching. We did not remember how He even sacrificed His own life because of love, because of compassion for others. What do we do? We still keep warring with each other, killing God's children just for a piece of land or for whatever reason. It's never right. The Lord never taught killing. Any religious leader, prophet, had never taught us any violence. So, on the occasion of Christmas celebration, I would really sincerely wish you well. But above all, I wish you more enlightenment. I wish you more remembrance of the teachings of Jesus and of all the Masters, because this is what religion is all about, the teaching of the Master, and which the followers should truly follow it, not just by letters, not just by reading it or chanting it, but by applying it, so that our world will become more worthy of Jesus Christ sacrifice and of all the Master's sacrifice. If not, we really, truly should not call ourselves human, because humans should have humane quality. If we call ourselves Christians, we should abstain from any killing of any harm to other beings. And if we say we follow other prophets and Buddhas, 
Guru Nanak, or Jain Master, Lord Mahavira, or Prophet Mohammed, peace be upon him. That even the Quran say, you have to treat all the creators good, then God will treat you well. I did not uh, say the exact words, but it's like that. And it says that we should be good guests on earth. A good guest doesn't kill the host, doesn't kill any other guests on this planet. There is no religion's doctrine that teach us to kill others. And you all know that. It's just that you must remember and must follow it and must apply it in everyday life. 